Okay, so today we're going to be talking about the element of art form. Form is like shape, except it's uh, applied to a three-dimensional form. We talk about form, we're talking about sculpture, um, but we can also talk about the illusion of form in two-dimensional work. We can categorize forms in a number of ways. One of these would be geometric uh, versus organic forms. Another would be abstract versus representational forms. In this slide we have a uh, large sculpture by Tony Smith called the fourth sign. This is a good example of a geometric form. Uh, it's easy to measure and made up of regular uh, three-dimensional shapes. This is also a good example of abstract form. It's its own thing. It's not representing any analog in the real world. It's not a version of something else that already exists. When something is completely abstract in this fashion, we can describe it as being non-representational. This is another example of a large geometric sculpture. This is by Constantin Brancusi. This is called the Endless Tower. And again, it's an example of regular shapes. But is it representational or abstract? If you have said abstract, treat yourself to a nummy. Contrasting that, we have more organic forms. This is a sculpture by Juan Miró. And again, it's an example of more organic forms, and it's also semi-abstract. The previous pieces were fully abstract. This is a little bit more figurative, but it's still abstracted. This sculpture is by Henry Moore. It's called Reclining Figure. It is similarly organic and semi-abstract. We can see the reclining figure, and it references the name, but it's not necessarily fully representational. It's simplified into uh, simpler shapes. This sculpture is called the Pietà. It's by Michelangelo. And this is an example of a representational sculpture. So the figures in it represent human beings and they, they look like human beings. You can see that great pains have been taken to represent everything as realistically as possible. There are two primary ways to create the illusion of form in a two-dimensional image. The first is shading. In this drawing by M.C. Escher, we can see a lot of shading applied to the hand forms. This is a good example because contrasting that, we have no shading on the sleeves, and you can see how the, sh the sleeves look very flat still, and he's using primarily what we would describe as shapes. But in the shaded hand portions, we can see the illusion of three-dimensionality because of that shading, and it's creating the illusion of form. This is a painting by Caravaggio, and this provides us with another really nice example of how shading can make our flat surfaces look like three-dimensional objects. Caravaggio was really well known for his shading. This is a prime example of how that use of shadow, especially those gradients, can really give a feeling of three-dimensionality to the flat surface of the painting. So shading is one way to show form in art. Uh, this piece by Andrea Mantegna uh, demonstrates that, but also another way, which is this sort of idea of foreshortening. Uh, where you kind of squish figures to make them look like they're coming into the foreground. So we can see that the way uh, the Christ figure in the image is smashed down because he's laying down and he's coming towards us. This transitions into the other way of making form that we're going to talk about, uh, which is called perspective. So perspective is a way of seeing things that makes them look uh, three-dimensional. So the first type of perspective we're talking about is intuitive perspective, which we see in a lot of medieval art, like the example above. Intuitive perspective is using those diagonals and those walls that move backwards away from us to show the three-dimensional nature of something, but it's using your intuition to do it rather than the rules that we see in linear perspective. When we have a type of perspective where we don't have vanishing points, but we use diagonals that are parallel to each other. That's called isometric perspective. And M.C. Usher uses this to great effect to create these spatial paradoxes in a lot of his images that are really kind of cool. So that's a useful tool if you want to play in that space and kind of invent things that way. Um, this is a little different than the linear perspective we're going to be looking at next because things don't converge, they don't have vanishing points. And because of that, you're more easily able to make these strange spatial paradoxes that we see in the Escher work. If we want to capture things as realistically as possible, we might choose to use linear perspective. Linear perspective is a method for foreshortening 
an image as it moves backwards in space. So you can see above, this is an example of one point perspective. On the boxes, we have an image uh, where the edges that are closer to us are bigger than the edges that are farther away, even though in reality they would be the same size. The farther away images appear smaller. So this is dealing with that sort of concept, uh, but giving us guidelines and rules to execute it as we see things in the real world. The use of linear perspective became popular in the Renaissance, where we see a lot of especially one-point perspective used. This is an example of the one-point perspective. We see the diagonals of the plaza behind the people moving backwards towards a point where they converge, uh, which is called the vanishing point. One-point perspective is great for when we're looking at buildings from the front, and the front of the building is parallel to the plane in front of our view. Uh, but when we look at buildings from an angle where the edge is the closest thing to us rather than the face of the building, we have to use what's called two-point perspective. Two-point perspective deals with situations where we have that front edge facing us. And what it does is it makes both sides going away from that edge, diverging from that edge, get smaller as they move away at a predictable rate. And it uses two vanishing points, one on each side, to do this. So you can see the left side the right side, even the top of the box, are getting smaller, or appear to be getting smaller, as they move away from the viewer. These paintings by Charles Scheeler demonstrate the use of two-point perspective. As you can see, usually when we use two-point perspective, it's pretty subtle. We want to use vanishing points that are off the paper. If you look at the orthogonal lines, uh, which are those diagonals that move away from the vertical edges, you'll see that where they converge, where the vanishing point is, is off of the picture plane in both of these images. To review, form refers to three-dimensional shape. Form is an illusion in two-dimensional work. The illusion of form can be created with shading. The illusion of form can also be created with foreshortening and perspective.